Okay, so welcome to uh, a new uh, session for uh, Roatec uh, sharing knowledge. This is Firas Talib, and today I will talk about uh, Lean Startup. So first of all, uh, just a little introduction. Why Lean Startup in uh, Roatec? Uh, so uh, you know, Roatec is a, a small company. Uh, we provide uh, development services uh, for our uh, customers mainly, but many of our customers are already startups. So they in uh, build. Uh, we help our customers uh, building their uh, ideas. Uh, another reason is that uh, Roatec has uh, its own uh, investment in some ideas recently. So I thought it is a good idea to start talking about uh, how to uh, build a new idea. Uh, using lean startup uh, methodology uh, the last reason is that maybe some of you if not all want uh, to start a business in the future so hopefully this presentation is for you okay so let's get started uh, first of all uh, a couple of questions about a startup why uh, what is a startup and why it is different from uh, a company uh, we all know that startup is risky why why is that and uh, what is the risk in startups if there is a risk how can we minimize this risk and how can we build a product that people want okay and achieve the product market fit uh, with the minimum risk and effort we will see in this presentation can lean a startup really help in minimizing the risk and achieving the product market fit and building a successful business okay so first of all as it happened to me and maybe some of you or maybe not maybe all of you as a beginner in business we were so excited recently graduated uh, we don't have a clear idea about what we will uh, do in our startup or in our but we are we were so excited we want to make an impact maybe we were we were inspired by Facebook or Microsoft Apple big companies and uh, the key word here is we didn't have a real plan for our uh, business we don't know how to uh, uh, target our customers uh, do customer segmentation we simply uh, target anyone who would use our great code or great application or great service and the, the reason is obvious on the other side we have this professional guy who has a very clear idea and before that of course he has a very successful career for 10 years 15 years maybe 20 years and he knows how to write a business plan he actually knows and he has a very long experience how to execute the business plan as well uh, also he knows how to target customers he used to do uh, the business plan right uh, with a, a clear business model in uh, companies okay and achieving the target maybe 90% of the target sometimes over achieving the target but business plan used to work he also has good relationships and this will lead to relatively easy funding okay now so the, the question now for beginner in business we know that they will fail and they will learn for that okay but why professional also fail in business they have all obviously all the reasons that make them strong enough to build a new uh, business so why do they fail Of course when they go to the market this business plan will be uh, useless in front of the first uh, customer and the reaction would be different f from a professional guy to another so for example some people will start to uh, do a major change by firing employees uh, some people they will stick to the business plan because it used to work okay and they will say okay we will go and uh, you know this is a startup we have to uh, be uh, very brave and uh, move on until we succeed so they will stick to the business plan and they will fail because it doesn't work some people they will say okay I knew it business plan will not work and I will move as Eric Reyes the f author of the lean startup book uh, describe they will move from a business plan to just do it plan maybe this is funny or not but actually it's like some professional people will not use a plan 
at all as if they are beginners let's say and at the same time beginner people will start to learn uh, the business plan to uh, you know uh, try to improve their uh, way of uh, building a business and they will fail so uh, again the question is why the most important component in plan driven uh, project management which is business plan why it fails in startup this is the most important questions that I will try to answer today uh, in short we have to uh, you know uh, distinguish between a startup and company because startups are not a smaller version of large companies and the main difference is that uh, in startups, we uh, it is built on top of assumptions and hypotheses. Okay, it is not built on top of facts. Uh, so there is an extreme uncertainty in building a new startup. So the root cause, in my opinion, and as I understand lean startup, the root cause is that in companies, business plan is built on top of numbers and facts, while business plan in startups will be built on top of assumptions and hypotheses so it will fail or most probably it will lead to uh, failure in other words companies can execute a non business model on top of a business plan startups should not execute a business plan they should look for a business a plan or a business model because they don't know how it, uh, it uh, how uh, they don't know from day one that uh, if, if all the assumptions will work or not in short startup requires a special component okay different from the the traditional business plan which is again don't get me wrong it is perfect it's still used we need it but we need it in company okay in a startup we need something special and the requirements for these special tools or components is we need this new methodology to help us look for a business plan and build a real uh, realistic business model around it we need this methodology to help us validate the hypothesis by doing experiment and we need this methodology to help us doing that iteratively uh, many times uh, doing the experiment with as much uh, as we can reducing the cost and effort to gain data get customer feedback put it again in uh, uh, the, uh, the new uh, service or product and move on uh, in short this is what lean startup is all about it's about uh, the rest of the presentation we will discuss the three main components that compose lean startup first one is the lean canvas business model that will help you put all your hypotheses and answer to the main questions that you need to focus initially in your startup plus you will build on top of that an MVB which is minimum viable product and I'm sure that all of you heard of that before third we need agile engineering that all of us work every day in agile engineering we build something we uh, release we get the feedback and we change we build again and so on so we need the same agile engineering uh, methodology as a part of the lean startup let me move to the first part which is lean canvas business model this is le the lean canvas business model as you can see it has many different uh, blocks inside it and it will help you answer the main questions so first one is the problems okay this is to specify your customer problems that you want to solve and if you have many segments of course you will mention all the problems that you want to solve plus you have to mention the existing alternatives for your solution okay we will see an example in the other side of the lean canvas we have the customer segments and you know the, uh, here you will list all your targeted customers and users you will try to separate between users who will use the service and customers who will pay for it in case they are different 
try to be descriptive as much as you can to describe all the segments that you will target and one of the most important part is listing the early adopters early adopters are people who are so eager to to find another solutions for their problem okay Fi or let me put it this way to find a better solution for their problems so finding the early adopters is essential in writing your first draft of lean canvas which represent your initial plan and of course as a best practice and this is you know there is no yes or no or there is no specific right answer here as a best practice maybe it's better to start with a uh, few number of uh, customer segments and maybe one is enough the third part is the unique value proposition okay so this requires a deep understanding in what really make your solution is unique to be able to position your solution as a different solution from other alternatives the other block is the solution okay which is obvious the solution that you will offer your uh, uh, potential customers specifically early adopters to to see if they it, if it will work or not other block is the channels and you know we have different communication channels uh, nowadays to reach to our targeted uh, audience or customer okay we have different techniques we have a free we have paid you may create a Facebook group to communicate with your potential customer you may uh, create a blog uh, and do some SEO uh, white papers webinars uh, doing online uh, videos uh, doing uh, uh, search engine marketing ads uh, etc maybe you you will call your customers you will look for them and meet them and try to understand their uh, concern about the problem so there are different channels and here I would like to mention very important point regarding marketing you see most of the blogs that we discussed now is related to marketing right uh, you know there is a traditional concept about marketing that it happens after we create the product but here in a startup marketing skills is essential to be part of the product development itself it is not just some th some activities that you will do after you build your product you need the marketing skills within uh, from day one in your startup to be able to build a product that people will use so uh, as a technical people mainly here uh, I, I believe most of us are pure technical it's time to think about your ideal founder uh, sorry your ideal co-founder maybe right uh, or if uh, definitely as an entrepreneur uh, you need to get at least the basic and the minimum of the marketing knowledge plus finding either a co-founder or a, a good employee in your project so marketing is essential uh, as a uh, a core part of building the product itself let's move to another part okay so it's obvious you know this is the revenue stream and cost structure and here is again re in terms of revenue stream the pricing some people defer and postpone discussing the pricing of their service pricing is uh, an essential part of your product okay so in general uh, generally speaking you don't have to uh, it, it's better to avoid deferring discussing the price price is important and uh, pricing you know is completely different subject that uh, we may discuss in the future and honestly I myself I will ask a consultant about pricing if one day I started my own uh, uh, business and I will not postpone uh, that and again it's case by case you know this uh, might be different from an idea to another uh, for cost structure you know it is all the cost that uh, you need to calculate into, uh, including uh, development uh, uh, marketing uh, renting uh, an office etc the key metrics here you will list the key numbers that will tell you about what's going on of your business okay and we will talk in some details about key metrics later unfair advantage the unfair advantage here let me go back unfair advantage it is something that not easily can be copied 
from other competitors or other people in your service and it is really challenging to determine or to have if, if you really have a um, uh, unfair advantage from day not day one or not anyway even if it's it will still empty from day one at least you know that you need this mm -hmm. and this will help you to uh, to, uh, to build your product in faster way so example about unfair advantage maybe a community you know some people uh, don't start their idea from day one they don't start developing their applications they just build uh, a Facebook group okay uh, they build a community for example okay and then after after that they will start building their uh, applications another example of unfair advantage is having a professional team like you for example okay um, SEO rank if you have a website and you are you are in the f first or second result always for specific keywords this is unfair advantage your uh, competitors relatively will not be able to get this advantage easily so this is the lean canvas here we put all our our assumptions our our uh, vision let's say and expectation about the and understanding about the product uh, we will uh, talk about uber as an a, a quick example so in uber the problem is having a high taxi rates and uh, finding uh, the difficulty in finding the taxi in a rush hour uh, we have limited income for drivers and limited work hours and as you can see here we have two separate uh, you know problems one for visitor and one for the driver the existing alternatives is the public transportation and classical taxis for unique advantage you can get a car to your trip at any time safely for the driver you can get extra income on your own schedule and of course as a quick description uber is less expensive and more secure and more flexible conditions of course we are imagining as uber will start today for the solution the solution must provide the low rate cars availability determining the car identity easily and flexible working hours the channels word of mouth and referrals and maybe others this is what I mentioned the pricing or the revenue is 25% commission per ride and for cost stru structure all the product development cost marketing wages operations etc um, the key metrics number of users per day for example and number of trips per day and others the unfair advantage in that time when they started of course getting a low rate easily by using a mobile application so this is just a quick example about how we can use link canvas it is one paper okay you will write it maybe you will print it you will put it on your in front of you and in front of all the team so they can see uh, they can understand more about the product and you have to be uh, the, the unfair mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so the unfair advantage here it means the uh, strength of, of our idea why our idea we think uh, to be to be more specific unfair advantage is related to something not easily copied from uh, from other uh, alternative solutions okay so for for, for okay, what but, you, but, you mention uh, is the unique okay. value proposition uh, does it does it or must it uh, available always? Uh, and, no. Uh, another question: no. How how to validate your idea after you write your? Uh, yes, give me a chance to to continue, and I will receive all the question at the end. Okay. Yes, I will. Sorry, sorry. I I will come back to this uh, idea, inshallah. Uh, okay, so again, this is the lean canvas as a starting point. This is the initial plan that we need to verify. Some people over believe in it, okay, because they watch a lot of uh, you know movies, maybe related to social network or whatever. That the startup and uh, maybe they are inspired by Steve Jobs and having a very very trust and self confidence in their vision. I'm not saying that this is wrong completely, but. I'm just describing the methodology that reduces the risk 
reduce the waste and effort that will be spent front before you uh, validate your idea so this is the draft let's say you can write many different uh, lean canvas for your ideas you can uh, brainstorm it uh, validate it ask uh, consult people etc but at the end of the day you will have this uh, clear idea hopefully now written in front of you about your uh, service or uh, product okay so now we have the lean canvas so uh, the first uh, there are three main stages about any startup let's start uh, mentioning and explaining each stage and in each stage we need to focus on something so the first stage is the problem solution fit in this stage you have to answer about the following question does it worth solving the problem that you now understand and you wrote it is it solvable really will people pay for it okay these questions will help you shape your initial product which is MVB after that you will you, you build it you will uh, release it and try to find customers and you need to reach to the, a very major and important milestone in any startup which is reaching or achieving the product market fit when you have a clear idea about it is your product or service is something that customers want they pay for it okay and you can build a business around this idea so this is a major important uh, step in your uh, in any startup after you reach the product market fit now it's time to accelerate and to grow so but but again can you accelerate it so in each stage there is different type of challenges and different things that you need to focus on before product market fit you have to focus on validated learning and doing pivots we will come to pivots in short in uh, but pivots means to change you have the uh, you, you need to have this ability to change the lean canvas any part of it that doesn't work anymore okay after you reach the product market fit congratulations this is a major step and you can focus on growth and optimization so uh, just a little question you know what's the point of having a marketing campaign uh, spending ten thousand dollar for example if you are still in the first stage in problem solution fit uh, what's the point of having a contract with influencers if you are still not sure if you ha if you reached the product market fit or not so uh, again there is no yes or no or right answer about that you need to have a very clear metrics to know that your startup is in the right stage after you reach the product market fit you have to be careful and more uh, you, you will have a new concern uh, uh, which is the competitors and people who copy the ideas and at the same time it's a good timing for funding if you need so uh, this is the main stages you will build you will measure uh, the feedback you will learn from the feedback and move on hopefully uh, from stage to another until you succeed now let's talk to the uh, let's talk about the second uh, component which is the MVB I think all of us we know this uh, famous uh, picture for Henrik uh, Neberg I believe if I pronounce the name correctly uh, and we already know what is the difference between the right MVB and the wrong MVB the MVB is not something that half ready okay it it should be ready to solve the problem but maybe it needs optimization you need to cut the fact from uh, the MVB and focus on the main feature or, or features that will uh, represent the solution to the problem okay so le let me give two examples about a good MVB uh, the first one is uh, food on the table startup for Manuel and Steve uh, the, the, in short the startup is to prepare a list of recipes for customers then ordering or requesting the right ingredients for these recipes uh, from the nearest shops and markets and of course 
taking advantage of any uh, offers uh, provided by the shops. So, uh, instead of deciding to build uh, an application, iOS, Android, uh, web applications, and uh, signing contracts with uh, many different uh, chefs, professional chefs across uh, around the world. Maybe they didn't decide to build an AI algorithm or uh, a recommendation system that depends on uh, the health status of uh, your customers. Instead of that, the founders, they looked in the nearest shop to their home about one customer and they found a one housewife that is interested in shopping simply okay and they uh, proposed to her to prepare a list of recipes each week okay from the nearest shops and uh, giving uh, uh, pr uh, then delivering the ingredients uh, home she agreed about that and then they tried uh, to uh, do it uh, because of the word of mouth okay they were able to get more uh, housewives and uh, customers interested and they used to get ten uh, dollars uh, uh, for the service the next MVB was uh, so they depended in Excel file maybe I don't know or it was completely manual way of validating the idea then they started depending on emails um, maybe in our uh, current uh, in this in these days maybe they would have depended on uh, uh, WhatsApp group maybe okay to receive the request from their customers going to shop getting the ingredients delivering it and uh, moving on so the idea is it was completely manual validation okay uh, then they started to automate the important part and step by step uh, they moved on and it of course it was a successful business that if you look for it now I don't think you will find the website because it is acquired by another company I tried to find the website before but I couldn't uh, I think it's in wiki uh, media uh, that it is acquired uh, from a company that I honestly forgot the name the other example is Zabos so in 1999, uh, the founder uh, 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 wanted to validate the idea of will people are ready to buy shoes online? So he created a new static website, okay, and uh, he chose a very attractive domain as you see. It is showsite.com. If you go now to showsite.com, you will be redirected to zabas.com. So this is the actual domain that he used, by the way. And he built a static website. He went manually. He went to shops and he came to an agreement with shops. He will take photos of shoes. He will put it in this simple website. And when people ask him uh, about uh, the price and he is interested in buying the shoes, he will go to the shops, buy the, the shoes and deliver it to the customer okay so no infrastructure no warehouses again manual way of validating the idea and at the end it is acquired by uh, Amazon the last part of uh, the or the last component of uh, lean startup is the agile engineering of course we do that every day you already ha you are already aware of the importance of having the iterative and the uh, doing sprints for any product uh, so i will focus more about the measurement and how to learn from what we measure so uh, one of the tools that uh, to, to create a metrics a uh, uh, real metrics one of them uh, tools that we can use uh, called pirate metrics so uh, pirate metrics is in short uh, is uh, composed of many metrics that each one leads to the second one as a one funnel so the first uh, uh, metric is acquisition okay so this is the first step of awareness so if for example if you are building a website this is the very first time when your customer go to the website this is the acquisition and of course you can define you have to de to put a very uh, specific definition for each um, for each metric 
So this is the acquisition. After acquisition, there is activation. So this is the first interaction from the potential customer with your with your serve uh, with your uh, idea. Uh, yeah, famous example activation like sign up. Okay, uh, after sign up, the customer will you you have to check the retention and how many times your customer is using the service and what part maybe of your service after that the revenue when customer buys your uh, service then referral when your customer is interested in uh, your service to that degree when he share the service with uh, others the most important thing in in metrics is to be uh, actionable uh, and accessible from all uh, the team so they can make a decision on top of that and again as you can see here is uh, again the marketing uh, plus uh, marketing skills plus uh, let's say that data engineering data scientist skill uh, right Be because you know you need to know how to manage the data that you have how to extract the right uh, metrics how to measure so again what are the skills that you need in your startup from day one? What are the skills that you already have? This will be a, uh, this is an important uh, question to, to uh, answer. Okay, so this is the, uh, the happy scenario, let's say. Okay, if people easily went from acquisition to activation to retention uh, all the way down to revenue and referral. So what if the number of acquisition for example is 10,000 but no one is doing sign up right you will make a decision on top of that and you will have a new assumptions maybe sign up page is not uh, well crafted okay maybe it has a bug right maybe you are asking for too much information so this is another assumption that you need to validate so you will ask for changing the sign up page you will build a new release and you will move on and try to get more data so you need to audit all these data in your uh, experiments and try to compare if there is a progress or not now what if there is no progress okay right what if you you tried many times and still nothing is moving uh, forward you will go back to your lean canvas and you need to take a very brave uh, uh, decision that many startups or many uh, entrepreneurs sometimes uh, they fail to take this uh, decision which is pivot you have to change measure something and the earlier the better because for example i heard that many times from my friends when they say okay i spent two years trying to convince convince this uh, customer segment and i invested a lot in marketing campaign etc building new features so changing the customer segment or changing any core thing in your plan is not easy in that time right so different type of pivot but the main definition is doing a major change in your canvas so uh, many many types but some of them is zoom in and actually I think this is one of the most important zoom in means when you have a product like 10 or 20 features and you notice that only two features are working well so you will do zoom in you will minimize the product to two features and you will f this is this what will be, be uh, the actual product only two features the opposite is zoom out and I think this will we don't need that uh, honestly um, I don't have insight I don't have data but I think most of the startups they over uh, fill their product with many features so maybe we need zoom in more than zoom out customer segment pivot customer need pivot maybe uh, channel uh, technology and anything uh, else so this is lean startup in short you have lean canvas that will help you write all your assumptions and focus on the most important thing then you will build the MVB on top of that you will use build measure learn agile engineering 
and you will either persevere and move forward if things went well using the metrics, the real metrics, or you will take the decision that requires a lot of courage from you, which is change. Uh, this is one of the references, the uh, many references that you can check uh, uh, to know more uh, information about it. I actually depended on three main resources uh, to prepare for this presentation. The first one is Lean Startup, uh, the Lean Startup book for Eric Ries, the founder of Lean Startup methodology. Okay, he started that in 2000, 2008. So all what I mentioned actually is not new. It is not a trend, of course. Uh, and it originates from a combination of lean manufacturing, okay, and uh, Steve Blank customer development uh, methodology. Uh, lean manufacturing, of course, is originated or uh, created by Toyota in 1930, uh, uh, I believe. So it's also not uh, not new at all. Lean manufacturing is the, uh, you know, the inspiration or the main for not only lean startup, it is for agile engineering that started in 2001. The third, um, uh, the second uh, resource is uh, Steve Blank uh, a blog. Steve Blank considered as one of the fathers of modern entrepreneurship. Uh, also, he in, uh, created the customer development methodology and he has a very nice and of course, useful uh, course called uh, Lean Launchpad Class at Stanford, and it's open source. The third one is Running Lean uh, book for Ash Moria that contains the Lean Canvas, and it completes the concepts and principles that you can see and read more about in the first book, the blue one. Uh, I just would like to, to give credit to Mr. Alexander Osterwilder, uh, who is the author or the founder of the original canvas, which is business model canvas. Ash Moria took it and in inherited it and uh, do some changes uh, for it. So for example, he removed the key partners and replaced it with the problem solution fit. Uh, other resources, if you are interested, uh, Lean for Analytics, Lean for UX, and Lean for Enterprise, Lean Startup at Scale. That's everything. Thank you for attending. Thank you so much. And I'm ready for your questions.